Okay, good afternoon, or at least here where I'm at, it's, uh, it's about 10, 11 o'clock in the afternoon. And so I had a request from a friend of mine that said, hey, look, I want to make a guard for the back window of my truck. I'm not really sure how to go about doing it, or if I can do it, maybe I'm better off just buying one. Yeah, you can buy one, and they might be made out of real thin gauged, you know, kind of steel. I don't know. You might find a good deal on something. You might search Craigslist, you might come across a good deal, but let's assume you want a fun project and you want to do it yourself. You say, well, how do I go about doing it? It's like with a lot of things that I talk about, I take a look at these things and I think, let's tear them down and not make it like overly complicated where you need plasma cutters and you need special machinery. Let's see if we can make something that's attractive, it's nice looking, it's functional, and it'll work on the back of your truck. So. I came up with some suggestions to him. Um, what I did is I found a wrecked or a messed up one at a junkyard one time. I brought it home. I cut the sections out of it. I repurposed some steel that I had laying around. It looked good. I cleaned it up, ground it down. I painted it and yay. But let me throw up some pictures. Let's assume you want a fun project and you want to go ahead and you want to make one. Let's take a look at the first picture. We'll go from there. One moment. Okay, let's start with these. These are four from a manufacturer called Backrack. They make really nice products. I mean, nothing to discredit them. I'm just using them to show you some basic designs that you can use. Sketch them out on paper if you want to, freeze the video here, and you know, design it yourself. Tweak it, make it how you want. Now, three of these you could probably easily do in your garage. Now, this three light one, I don't know because you would have to spend some time um, if you want to run lights up through this and actually make this functionally work. But you could do it. You could run the wires up through, you know, that rectangular tubing. You can get these lights anywhere. You can set them in. You can use a jigsaw with a metal blade, drill holes and cut these out, you know, file them, make everything look great on a piece of like 16 gauge or you know, whatever you come across at the, you know, at the scrapyard at the steel supplier. So you can do this. Okay. It's not impossible. It's going to take you more time though. The other three are a little bit simpler. You know, one of them has what like, look over here on the right has louvers. The other's got up on top on the top, right? It's called three round and the other one's side mesh. Now for the side mesh, you know, you can use, uh, you can use a lot of different things. You could use expanded metal, they have um, actually mesh screen out at the steel supply place, but you might have to buy it in four by eight sheets unless you're lucky enough to find some in the scrap pile. But all of these are doable. You could take a look and you could go out and take your measurements, rough measurements, go gather up your steel, bring it home, and then actually start you know, figuring it out on paper exactly what you want to do. You can make them totally vertical, straight up and down, now his are a little bit of a diagonal before, you know, that very top piece of rectangular steel goes across. Make your own tops. You can play around with this and have some fun. And if you take your time, clean up your welds, clean up the splatter, use your flat wheels, all this stuff I keep talking about, you can make a nice, uh, you know, back guard for your, you know, your truck window. So let me show you a couple of others that people have done. And I'll show you one similar to the one that I did. One moment. Um, so off of the question and answer part of this is like, it seems too complicated. I'm not going to do it. I don't think I can do it. Blah, blah, blah. Something along those lines. You can do it. If you take a piece of paper and you lay out what you're going to do. Now, one of the comments that came back to me is like, well, how do you know what size truck I have? These dimensions aren't going to fit my size truck. No, I understand. This is a template for you. Okay, it's something to go by. I mean, you can take a look here on the bottom right and left where he used angle iron to make the base of how this thing was going to anchor into his truck bed rails. You can do the same thing. It's just a template to give you as a guide. You can tweak this to any of your liking or any way you want to do it. You don't have to put lights on it if you don't want to. Maybe your taillights and everything else is fine, but you want that guard there to protect your windows. So what he did in this picture is he laid it all out. So I'm showing you the dimensions here. You can take these or this guide and you can lay this out yourself. Now, the one that I got out at the scrapyard was very similar to this. That's another reason why I threw this up. And those vertical two pieces that are in there by that, you know, in the middle of that back window there or thereabouts, 
they were damaged they were all dented it looked bad i think i paid like ten dollars for the thing and i got home and what i did is i welded on angle iron like he did here to secure it to the truck railing that way i could slide it up just how i wanted it and still stay a little bit of a distance from that window so then you turn around and you go okay well now what well i at that time i had cut out these center sections and I welded three of them going across and then I used, it's like that mesh screen or it's like that mesh metal you saw on the previous video. I found some in the scrap bin out at the, uh, the steel supply place and I went ahead and bought it. I ran it across the back. I welded it real well so it was real strong. That way anything that you're carrying that comes slamming against that truck bed isn't gonna hit these windows. Now. I also came up at a little bit of a diagonal like he did because that's just the way it was designed when whoever made it. And like I said, I got it out of the scrapyard. So on tops of those, I put plates and you can drill holes in those if you wanted to and actually mount your lights up there facing backwards or down at an angle backwards. So there are a lot of options here. Now I didn't mount any lights in the one that I did, but the ability is there. I mean, to get up there, drill holes, you know, and mount them if that's what you want to do. Or you can mount them like he did here in this picture. You can decide not to use expanded metal across, you know, the back or any type of mesh. You can just leave it just like he has it in the picture. Lots of design ideas. Let me throw up another picture and we'll answer some more questions. Okay, now here's another homemade one. And this is one similar to the way that I was explaining to you how I finished the one that I got out of the junkyard. Okay, so... I use the expanded metal or the mesh, whatever you can find and buy. And I created mine, but it goes all the way across. Now in his, he left that middle section open. He might have a little camp or slide window or something. I don't know, whatever he's got going on. But take a look here. He probably anchored it right down onto his truck bed by either using nice, similarly wide, you know, flat steel, or you could use angle iron or whatever you want. Now, in this case, instead of going, you know, like with square tubing or anything else, he used round. Now, you might have come across that out of that steel supplier and you get enough round to where you can make this too. I thought the design turned out well on this. I think that the guy did a good job. And um, it's, if, it's whatever you want. I mean, you know, take a look. I've got one more picture to show you and we'll wrap this up. Okay, let's take a look at what he did here. I'm going to shrink this picture down a little bit. It got a little bit blurry. Give me just a sec. Okay, here's the last picture I wanted to show you. I didn't explode it. It gets way too blurry. Um, he made this out of simple rectangular steel, anchored it down. But what he did in the middle there, instead of leaving it open, um, I can't zoom in. I mean, it just comes out way too blurry. But he used quarter-inch cold-rolled like rod. It's, it's very cheap out of the supply place. And he created like this spider web. Nice little touch to it. Gives a little bit of a design. And you can see in his, he's one, two, three, four, five verticals on each side, a couple of cross members. It's probably made out of fairly, uh, I would make it out of a decent lighter gauged, you know, in terms of thickness, you know, uh, rectangular steel. You don't need it super heavy. But I'm sure that he got a decent thickness. It's durable. It protects his window. Um, these are projects to think about. You know, I had a friend said, hey, you know, I'll just pay you to make me one. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. You go buy all the steel and bring it over and I'll work with you on it and I'll only charge you X amount of dollars. Um, I could have probably went ahead and pitched him and just made the whole thing. But, you know, sometimes I don't have all the time in the world either. And I'm not trying to make a living doing this. But you can definitely make money on the side to fuel your hobby and your projects. I, I would suggest at least you consider it because at least it keeps, you know, you in supply of MIG wire or whatever you're using in welding materials. But, uh... Another project to think about. Hey, I'll see you on the next video. Please click subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.